What's going on, everyone? So the Los Angeles Lakers are down 3-0 against the Denver Nuggets, and they look to be the first team in history to come back from a 3-0 deficit. Now, it's very likely not going to happen, uh, but at least from this team, I want to see a fight, right? Win game four. Maybe you go and steal game five. That would be wonderful. Uh, and then, who knows? You get back home, you get to game six, maybe you could force game seven, and then it's a coin flip at that point. Uh, but Regardless, whatever ends up happening, whether the Lakers lose in four, five, six, seven, whatever, uh, at least the Lakers have an understanding of their uh, essential core, right? You've got LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Next year, they should be a lot healthier because they actually have a real roster and a real team. So they're not going to have to work as hard. They're not going to have to do as much, right? LeBron James had to carry a heavy load during the regular season because the team just wasn't up to snuff. Anthony Davis, when LeBron James was out, had to carry a heavy load because, again, the team just wasn't up to snuff. But if LeBron James is missing, this team is still good enough to win games with just Anthony Davis or vice versa. If Anthony Davis is missing, uh, the Lakers are going to be in a position to win games with just LeBron James. Uh, if both of them sit out, you feel like, okay, the Lakers are still good enough to win a game or two. Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, those guys should be better next year. Uh, we'll have a full training camp, a full offseason, a full preseason to kind of gear up and build that chemistry and that camaraderie with this team going into next season. And so with that, you know, at least you got your core, right? I definitely expect the Lakers to look to explore and upgrades or maybe kind of retooling this team uh, to a degree in the offseason. But you know, you got LeBron James, you got Anthony Davis, right? After those two, you have Rui Hachimura and Austin Reeves, who were spectacular, they were great all season with the Lakers, and they were great in the playoffs. They were our two most consistent guys, night in and night out, showed up, delivered, and were just brilliant for us. And these are two guys that you can really add and keep for the long haul. Now, both of these guys are free agents. Both of these guys are very likely going to get paid, and they're going to get paid fat. But I fully believe that the Lakers will pay these two. Um, I don't have a doubt in my mind. Austin Reeves is probably definitely going to get a bag. Rui Hachimura, I think some team will throw an offer at him. Luckily, the Lakers can match whatever offers that are made to Rui and Austin Reeves. So with that, you keep them. Now you have basically your core four guys, right? You got Austin Reeves, got Rui Hachimura, you got LeBron James, you got Anthony Davis. So you got basically four of your eight to 10 guys during the regular season. And then your you know, seven, eight guys come to playoffs. And then on top of that, you got Max Christie, which I could see getting a very, uh, a more significant role. Uh, then whatever free agents become available, maybe you could get an entice uh, a player or two that would get a, you know, taxpayer mid-level or a mid-level exception. Maybe they would take a discount to come to Lakers because the Lakers are a contender. They are absolutely a contender. They were in the Western Conference Finals. There are one of four teams left. That means that they are a contender. Uh, you have LeBron James and Anthony Davis, who should be healthier. Rui Hachimura, Austin Reeves, they've been a model of health so far for the Lakers this season, so you'd imagine they stay healthy. And now you can start kind of retooling and building around your core four guys, and you got the guys that you know will at least show up. I don't think the Lakers need a lot. I think the Lakers are really, really close. Um, I think Lakers definitely need another big man outside of Mo Bamba, uh, like a legitimate big man, not winning Gabriel, not Tristan Thompson. I also think that the Lakers uh, really could use another perimeter defender. So maybe you could go and, and unload D'Angelo Russell and go get a perimeter defender or unload a, uh, a Beasley and Mo Bamba, especially if you can sign another center and then go get a perimeter defender. And I think the Lakers really need a three-point specialist. They need somebody that can consistently knock down threes. Beasley was supposed to be that. He was very lackluster and underachieved uh, with the Lakers. But maybe you could go and get a Buddy Heald or something like that. He was available uh, for trades or maybe a boy on Bogdanovich. He, for a long time, was rumored to be available for trades. Maybe go get a piece like that, add it to this Lakers roster, give them an elite three-point shooter that can knock down consistently three, four, five threes a night, right? Now you start adding these little pieces to your core of Reeves, Rui, LeBron, and AD. Now you can be back to the Western Conference Finals and competing for an NBA championship and hopefully get an NBA championship. Uh, obviously, Austin Reeves, 
LeBron James loves him. High IQ guy. Does everything just brilliantly. Uh, he's a guy that you imagine is only going to get better. Right? This is only his second year in the league. As great as he was, and as much as we expected him to be brilliant because of his performance, it's it's just crazy to think about. <laughs> I mean, he played like a guy that had been that had won multiple championships, right? I mean, there are stars that haven't shown up. I mean, look at guys like James Harden, who just failed to show up in the playoffs. And you got a guy like Austin Reeves, who this was his first ever playoff run, and he delivered. I mean, in numerous ways. Every series, he was brilliant. Right, he had some rough stretches, but that's something that should be expected, right? With a guy that it was his first playoff series, but he stuck with it. He played his game. He made his adjustments. He was just brilliant for the Lakers, and I imagine he takes another step next year, even if he doesn't. Even if he just stays the guy that he is, uh, that's still a really good player. That's still a blue chip rotation guy, a starting level talent that could be your third, fourth guy on a championship contender. That's what Austin Reeves is, right? So I definitely think with them, you also have Jared Vanderbilt, which I don't expect the Lakers to let go of. If he can develop a consistent three-point shot in that corner, and I'm not saying he has to be elite, but can he just get around the league average, which is like 35%? Can he just do that? Because if he does, then that just opens up so much more because now he's not a liability on the offensive end because he can at least knock down well enough for you to have to respect it. So if he can kind of be a consistent knockdown three-point shooter, then again, you basically have now five, six guys uh, of your rotation. Again, with Reeves, Rui, LeBron, AD, Jared Vanderbilt, uh, Max Christie, uh, which I expect him to take a, a, a real rotation step next season unless the Lakers just get a bunch of pieces but even then during the regular season I could see him getting a lot of run a lot of burn um again maybe you flip Beasley and Mo Bamba into something with you have the 17th pick you have like four second round picks you could trade and you also have the 29th pick and that's not even counting pick swaps so the Lakers have a lot of flexibility this offseason that they could kind of just use to kind of put around your core. Jared Vanderbilt is another guy that really deserves a lot of credit and a lot of love. He was great defensively. Um, I mean, there was a real argument to, to keep him in these games against Denver, right? Guarding Murray. Problem is just his lack of offense just makes it so difficult for the Lakers because now Denver basically only has to de- defend, you know, four guys rather than all five. But if he can develop that consistency in his shot, that could be very valuable for the Lakers going forward. Uh, And then LeBron James and Austin Reeves, their connection, I imagine, will only continue to grow, will only continue to get better as they had another full year under their belt and then progress in a positive direction. Rui Hachimura has shown just his versatility on the defensive end, his ability to defend pretty much all five positions. He's not great laterally. Right? He's not great against the quicker defenders. He is a guy that is big enough, long enough, and strong enough to kind of at least put some pressure. Um, but we saw the leaps and bounds that he had since he came to the Lakers. Phil Handy really did a number on Rui Hachimura. He really fixed that kind of hitch in his shot, which made Rui a lot more consistent, a lot more viable. Uh, I expect him to only continue to improve and work with the Lakers in the offseason. I don't think Rui Hachimura is going to want to leave the Lakers. Because the Lakers really gave him an opportunity. Not only did they really give him an opportunity, uh, but they helped him develop and develop quickly. Uh, The strides that he took from when he first came to the Lakers to this playoff run is ridiculous. And he's a guy that can consistently, night in and night out, give you 15 to 20 a night. And I think he plays an even bigger role next year because the Lakers will know that they can trust him, that they can rely on him, uh, his defense, his ability to knock down that mid-range. I would like to see the Lakers next year really run more plays for Rui. Like, as great as Rui has been, the Lakers don't really run any sets for him. He's getting all his shots on, like, uh, all his buckets from catch and shoot or just you know, play breaks up and he ends up getting the ball. And so he just takes a couple steps, knock down the mid range, or he gets the ball uh, on a kick out and just powers through to the basket. As we saw, they're not really running sets to where, you know, they're freeing Rui Hachimura and allowing him to get a, a real opportunity in his like, you know, money spots. 
I would like to see that because I really do. I mean, many people compare him to Kawhi Leonard, and I completely and fully understand that comparison. I mean, his shot, he does, obviously, he's not the defensive guy that Kawhi Leonard is, but offensively, he's not that far off. That mid-range assassin, that guy that just, every time he shoots the ball, you think it's going in. And because more times than not, it is, especially in these playoffs. I mean, he's shooting like 55% from the field uh, total. He's shooting like 50% from three. Like, the guy was just a model of consistency for the Lakers, game in and game out, uh, and being in his versatility to guard bigger players, right? I mean, him guarding Carl Anthony Towns was massive for the Lakers. Um, him, he really gave uh, Jokic trouble, right? Jokic hasn't played great since Rui's been defending him. Uh, Jokic is just so much bigger, but Rui allows Anthony Davis to kind of patrol the paint more, right? And if the Lakers get another center, maybe you could have that center bane with, uh, you know, a, a Jokic and then have like Rui and Anthony Davis. Like you could run these bigger sets, which I think would give the Lakers more versatility. But in general, I, I really like what I saw from the core group of these Lakers. Again, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Rui Hachimura, Austin Reeves. Vanderbilt definitely deserves some love, and I very likely expect him to improve and get better. Again, he's only 23, just turned, what, 24, I believe? So he's still extremely young, has a ton of upside, a ton of potential. He's still very raw, and I expect the Lakers training staff to really develop him and turn him into a quality two-way player. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Think the Lakers uh, definitely have a bright future with this core? Uh, do you think that, no, you need to add some other pieces to it? Whatever your thoughts are, however you feel, love to hear it. Let me know.